It seems that recently Instagram has really gotten to know me, at least when it comes to ads. I keep seeing ads for things I really, really want. We're going to take a look at one of them today, which is the Milk Street Nakiri knife. This is a knife designed by Christopher Kimball, who was for so long the editor-in-chief of Cook's Illustrated Magazine, a fantastic magazine. And for my younger viewers, a magazine is pieces of paper, which came from trees, that they would put things on and paste together and send you in the mail for money. Ads for the Nakiri knife talk about how the old chef's knife is dead. I don't necessarily think that that's true. The chef's knife of mine is not going anywhere. Anywhere, but I do think that knives with improvements in them are welcome in the kitchen. Milk Street says that this knife is an homage to Japanese tradition, and when you look at the knife, you're going to see that the knife has got a 15 degree angle. It's made out of German steel, not Japanese steel, but 15 degrees is the angle that a lot of Japanese knives are sharpened at. It makes for a very, very sharp edge, but it dulls pretty easily, and so if you have a knife like this, you really want to know how to sharpen your knife. It's not quite as long as my typical chef's knives. I have a 6 inch and an 8 inch set of chef's knives. This is a 6.75, so it falls right in the middle between the two. Inside the package is the knife with a nice sheath on the blade. The knife itself has these laser etched patterns on the side. It's a grid pattern and that's important to keep things from sticking to the knife. At $67, this knife is a lot less expensive than my traditional Japanese knife, which was, I think, about $200 at the time. The Milk Street knife has got an ABS plastic handle that is very, very durable. ABS is the same plastic used in making parts for automobiles. It has a very nice curve to it, but it's definitely not as comfortable as some other knives that I've used, but it does feel really good and secure in the hand. Why does the knife have etchings? Well, if you take a traditional chef's knife, like this chef's knife, and you go to cut something that's sort of sticky, like a squash in this case, you'll notice that the pieces often stick together. So if I go to cut with a traditional chef's knife, after a while the pieces will sort of start sticking to the blade. It adds a motion when you cut to keep it from sticking, you have to sort of flip the blade in order to get the pieces off. My Chef's Toku knife, by comparison, has these little divots in it. These divots create a pocket of air, which is what makes the food fall off more easily. That's the idea behind the serration in the Milk Street knife as well. Now let's take a look at how that works. Okay, first off, it does stick sometimes. This knife is very sharp. It cuts through the zucchini really effortlessly. Mm, it has a really nice fill to it. I like the size of the cuts in this. Let's see how small I can get this cut. So that's about the smallest fillet that I can do with the Milk Street knife. Now I'm going to try that same cut with my chef knife. About the same, but it felt like I had more effort. I'm going to try that one more time. That's really nice. Now, you can see that the claims that the food don't stick to this. A little bit exaggerated. There we go. As the pieces get thinner, there's a little bit more adhesion because the forces that hold it to the knife are stronger than the forces that would pull it with gravity off of the knife. You can see this isn't coming off of my Sentoku blade either. Everyone loves cutting into a tomato as a test of how sharp a knife is. I don't think it's a perfect test. The idea is that the outside of the tomato has a lot of resistance to it, but the inside does not. It's all squishy inside. And so you want a blade that's sharp enough to cut through the tomato without pushing down the stuff inside. So first my Sentoku knife. You saw that stuck again, right? And now the Milk Street knife. Interestingly, the grooves on the side of the knife give me some resistance when I'm cutting against the tomato. I don't know if that's good or bad. I feel like it's helping me cut, but it's also not leaving them unstuck. And it's not quite as effortless as my Santoko knife. It's got an interesting feel, sort of like a nail file. Okay, next up I'll try an onion. When I use a chef's knife, sometimes I feel like there's multiple different cutting surfaces, and that's a little bit of a problem that the Milk Street knife is trying to address. You have the sharpness here and the weight here of the knife, but then when you're working at the tip of the knife, you end up having to sort of push pressure down on it in order to get it cut, as well as the part of the knife where there was actually material on the knife. So for cutting a dice this way, the weight of the blade is really nice. When I'm trying to cut slots in the top of the onion, there's a lot of resistance, and that's really hard to do. Okay, there's one of the worst dices I've ever done in my life. And now with the Milk Street knife. Because there's no tip to this, I'm actually able to use the same part of the blade and the same force of the blade when I'm cutting downward. And I'm getting a lot smaller cuts here. I'm liking this a lot. And that is even 
a lot better dice and the food comes right off. I'm gonna grab one more onion here and show you something else that I use. This is a cleaver. Now this cleaver is also by Shun who makes my knives. It is a very sharp blade. So a lot of cleavers are dull for hacking or chopping. I love this because it's got the same idea as the Milk Street knife, which is that there's a slight bevel to the edge, but then the blade is mostly flat, but it still has a nice rocking surface. And so really, the way I see this Milk Street knife is like a teeny cleaver. This cleaver is not sharp at all. I just sharpened my other two knives. This one really, really needs a sharpen. So I'm going to show you that with the right design of a knife, even if it's not sharp, you can get a lot done. Because of the flatness, this is a better blade to use for onions than my chef knife was. But the sheer mass of the knife and the edge that is on it is allowing it to cut through the tomato very easily. Now, one thing I cannot do well with this knife because it's very thick is make super thin cuts of tomato. That's about the thinnest I can do. In this case, the Milk Street knife actually does it a little bit better. This is the thinness of a tomato. I can almost see through it. Cut with the Milk Street. I love food. I save the pork chop for last. I'm going to do two things here. I'm going to take a pork chop. My Santoku blade is much better at filleting, but I'm going to try and open up this and butterfly it a little bit. Because of the grid on this knife, the blade really sticks, really sticks to meat. I can feel the meat pulling against the grid on here. I would not probably go to this knife first for cutting meat. The handle is reasonably comfortable. It's not the most comfortable handle that I've ever used, but it does work well, and it would work well for an entire day of cooking. One thing that's a little annoying to me is the tang down here is a little bit sharp on the edges. You actually hold a chef's knife like this with your finger on this part of the knife, which after a lot of cutting means that this part of my finger might get a little bit irritated. So here are my final thoughts. The knife is a good knife. You could give this to somebody who is getting their first house, their first kitchen and learning to cook. This would be a very solid knife for them. It wouldn't necessarily be the best knife that you could get them, but at this price point, it's a very good knife. Still for $60, it's a good beginner's knife. I will link to some other beginner knives in the description below, as well as these knives, which are some of my favorite knives that I've ever used. But what do you think? Are we paying a lot for internet hype when it comes to a knife like this? Or is this really smart marketing, putting this in front of people like me on Instagram? This was my first in my series of Does Instagram Know Me videos, and so if you found any products recently that you particularly liked that were advertised to you on Instagram, let me know that in the comments below. I'd love to try those out as well. If you'd like to see more of my honest reviews, you can do that here. If you'd like to subscribe, and please do. It helps the channel out. You can do that over here. For Dave Fries This, I'm David Schloss, and as always, thanks so much for giving this a try. Hmm.